Rebuilding a Tangy Model Steam Engine Part 6, straightening the crankshaft and painting the base. I've never shown this process before for a simple reason. If you've never done it before and you don't know what you're doing and you're a bit heavy handed, you will destroy the crankshaft. If I destroy this crankshaft in the process it's not a big problem because I was going to make one by machining a steel bar the same diameter as the crank web. The crank web runs quite true on the crankshaft until you start to pull it out of the chuck. And here it is about halfway out of the chuck and it's still running pretty true. I'll pull the crankshaft out of the chuck a little bit more and see what happens. And it's still not bad, but when I get right to the end of the crankshaft, it's quite a different story. With the crankshaft in this position, there is some run out, I can see it, not a lot, but when I pull the crankshaft out to its full extent, watch. This is very wobbly, so it means that the only real part of this crankshaft that's bent is the extreme end of it. To straighten this crankshaft, I need to know how far out of true it is, so I'm using a dial test indicator, and here I'm setting it up on the lathe bed on its magnetic base. The outer ring of the dial test indicator is connected to the main face, so I can rotate it to centre it. And now as I rotate the crankshaft, as you can see it's not 100% true. But it's only out of true by a couple of thou, and to be perfectly honest the engine would work fine. But as I pull the crankshaft out of the chuck, it's a different story. In this position the crankshaft is miles out of true, so I'm going to tap it with my soft hammer. And I'm using the term tap lightly, because that's not tapping it. I really did hit it very hard with the soft hammer. And doing it this way is no good at all. As you can see, it's just getting worse and worse. You will notice that I'm holding this crankshaft in my four-jaw self-centering chuck. That way, the pressure is evened out on the crankshaft. I'll just hit it again to make it worse. And now the crankshaft is even more bent than it was in the first place, I'm going to straighten it. I'm repeatedly hitting the crankshaft with the soft hammer. And this is not the way to do it either, because you need to hit it, look at it, hit it and look at it. Because on one of the hammer blows, it ran true. Then I hit it again and it didn't run true. You can see now by the dial test indicators reading that it's better, but it's not right yet. So once again, I spin up the crankshaft and then I hit it gently with the hammer. Once again, you need to be gentle with this. It's no good really hitting it hard. I decreased the velocity of the hammer blows and now I think you'll find when I put the DTI on it, that means a dial test indicator, it should be better. According to the reading on the dial test indicator, it still shows that it's out of true, but only by about 3 thou. I think for the age of the engine that this crankshaft's going to go back into with its worn bearings, it will be okay. But if I wanted to be really pedantic, I could get this 100% by repeating the process until the men in white coats arrive to take me away. And so for that very reason, not wishing to go back to the asylum quite so early this year, I'm going to move on to the base. All the base needs is a good clean up. I started off with 100 grade emery cloth and then I thought, well hang on a minute, I've got a much better tool to do this. So I used the flapper wheel in the Proxon motor tool. It speeds up the job and it's far easier. Even though this is quite a good casting, it's very smooth, well, for a casting. It does have one or two lumpy bits on it and I'm removing these with a needle file. Then I gave it another going over with the Proxon motor tools flapper wheel followed by wiping the casting all over with some panel wipe. As far as I'm aware, this panel wipe stuff is naphtha. It smells very much like the stuff I used to put in my Zippo cigarette lighter. Over now into the outer part of the workshop, and I'm using some HMG Paints 1K Etch Primer. And I'm just giving the component a light coat all over. You can see that this casting isn't perfect, and if I wanted to be very, very anal, after this coat of etch primer, I would use cellulose stopper to get a perfect finish. But then the base casting would look too perfect. I still want it to look like a casting, not like a piece of plastic. So here, as usual, is a still of the paint drying. And while the paint was happily drying in the outer part of the workshop, I thought it was a good idea to fit the crankshaft into the forge yourself centering chuck and clean up the outer part of it. 
the area of the crankshaft at the opposite end to the crank web was quite rusty, as was the end. So it's a simple fix, into the chuck like this, I didn't grip it by the crank web because that would have been a little bit unstable and it would have marked the crank web as it's only made out of brass. But by gently gripping the part by the crankshaft as shown, this seemed to be the best way to do it and a couple of grades of sandpaper later the end looks really good. I don't want to polish this part of the crankshaft, I think it looks okay just as it is. Originally, this pulley was fitted to the end of the crankshaft, but it's a very sloppy fit, and the V-groove in it is not machined evenly all the way around, so I think that's going to be consigned to the bin after I've copied it and made a new one. One part I need to make which is quite important is the crosshead, so I'm just finding out what the diameter of the crosshead is going to be. I think it's 9 16 of an inch, and this is a piece of 9 16 of an inch steel bar. It's a bit of a rattle fit, so I think I'll make the crosshead out of a bigger piece of metal and turn it down to fit accurately in the crosshead guide. I don't know whether to make the crosshead itself out of a piece of steel or to use a piece of phosphor bronze. Either would look okay. So what about this exhaust hole under the cylinder where someone in the past had soft soldered a pipe in there? Well, one thing's for certain, it's not quarter by 32. It's not actually quarter anything, it's a bigger hole than quarter of an inch. I noticed in the bottom of the hole was quite a lot of debris, so I'm using a needle file to clean this out. And here I'm just about to re-thread it the correct size. And the correct size is 9 30 seconds of an inch by 32 threads per inch which is quite an unusual size and possibly explains why the previous owner of the engine soft-soldered a copper pipe into there. I need to make an adapter which will be quarter by 40 at one end and 9 30 seconds by 32 at the other end and that will allow me to use a PM Research elbow for the exhaust outlet. But that's it for this episode, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.